Father's here. Um, as always, welcome to those of you here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those of you who are joining worship from home. Welcome back to those of you who have been away. And a warm welcome to our scholarship recipients and their families who are with us today. Uh, also, if you're with us here for the very first time today, uh, you should know that whoever you are, and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here at that poison congregation church. I want to extend a thank you to those folks who have been helping me get settled in these past three weeks, uh, especially Paula and Lisa and Phil, Richard, <coughs> Tina, and Michelle. I appreciate your patience and your guidance and your flexibility. Uh, I also want to uh, welcome the help of anyone who's tech savvy. Uh, I still need to set up my internet connection and my email. Uh, so if that's your thing, please see. Yeah, I'd really be uh, appreciative. Uh, probably won't take long. Uh, it's taken me a long time and I haven't gotten any. Uh, next Sunday, you may know, uh, is Pentecost Sunday. And it is our constant tradition to wear red, so please wear something red. What else do I have for you? Um, any announcements from the congregation? Um, one more thing I want to point out is that um, we will begin singing a congregational intro in worship. Uh, and the words will be provided in the bulletin. Uh, we'll start off with some very familiar pieces, so you have to the music. Um, so please feel free to sing along. Good people, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
Association. Loving God, today we thank you for our members. For some of us, our brothers carry us in their wounds. And for some of us, our brothers do not give us birth. Yet we all share a loving gratitude for those who nurture us with love, care, protection, and instruction. With gratitude, we remember the words of our friendship. Memorial 
scholarship. She is a senior at Bishop Stang High School and has volunteered for many projects centering around providing clothing and other supplies for the less fortunate. She has been on the diversity council, debate team, the green team, a student ambassador, and peer mentor, as well as being a teacher of the school paper. Do you have to do your homework? <laughs> she has very work experience from restaurants to retail clothing to babysitting to volunteering in the Little Big Snack Shack at New Rochester. Some of Sophia's favorite fun activities are spending time with friends, reading, or creative writing. One of Sophia's English teachers wrote, and I quote, I love seeing her embrace the creative side, often proudly showing off a new crochet project. Sophia will attend the University of Maryland in the fall. She, quote, chose the University of Maryland for their outstanding criminology program on top of having a beautiful campus full of spirit, good connections, and wonderful opportunities. She's so excited about the field she chose because it is the field she always dreamed of going into to make a difference. Congratulations.
that one, I want to play the drums. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Michelle and Choir, for all you do. Our second reading is from Isaiah 66, um, verses 12 and 13. For this is what the Lord said, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dangle on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. May God bless our understanding of this holy word's description. We pray with you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. So you probably wouldn't expect me to begin this Mother's Day sermon talking about a couple of prostitutes, right? <laughs> Lynn, Lynn was quite surprised she came up to me this morning and said, is this really what I'm reading? <laughs> of all the mothers that I could have chosen to talk about from the Bible today, I was drawn to these two mothers because they are not the model examples of perfect mothers. <laughs> and I selected this Old Testament story from 1 Kings to illustrate the depth of a mother's love and the unique connection that mothers have with their children. Mothers will defend their children at all costs, and they will go to extremes in sacrificing for their child's well-being. So these two mothers in our story had each delivered a child under less than desirable circumstances. Some people might consider the women sinful, but we don't know what happened in their lives that led them to the work they did. We can, however, imagine how difficult it was for them to survive without the help of a husband, a family, a community. They had no one to celebrate the birth of their babies. No baby shower. Just two women, each having to serve as one another's midwife. We might also imagine the anxiety and the concern that would accompany the impact of a pregnancy on their work and the fear of an uncertainty that might have come wondering how each would provide for themselves and their children. In spite of these anxieties, concerns, fears, uncertainties, both women in the story wanted their child. And both laid claim to the same child after one mother accidentally and tragically caused the death of her own child. Obviously, Old Testament writers didn't know anything about postpartum blues or post-traumatic stress disorders. So we're left with a picture of a cruel and selfish, heartless woman who tries to swap her dead child for a living baby of her companion. There must have been some serious emotion that led these two women to have the opportunity to appear before the great King Solomon that great, wise king of God's chosen people. I want to point out an important lesson that the Hebrew author wrote into the story. Uh, because people then and now might question, why would a king take time to hear the case of two prostitutes? Religious scholar Walter Brueggemann suggests the king's willingness to hear from the most unworthy in society serves to illustrate that all sinners have access to God. This was intended originally to be a teaching story. It was never the original intent of the author to communicate an actual truth. Uh, after hearing from the women, the king, the wise king, offered a solution to their problem. Bring out a sword and just split the baby in half. And while dividing the property is a good way to resolve some disputes, uh, 
certainly doesn't work so well with babies now, does it? <laughs> the women, the woman who had laid false claim to the child, stubbornly stood her ground and she said, He shall neither be mine nor yours divided. And it became evident to the king that the second woman was the actual mother. When she said, Oh, my Lord, give her the living child, and by no means put him to death. And the king's clever plan to determine who the true mother was certainly worked. Even if the deceitful woman had made a better case, there's no mistaking who truly loved the child. The unique connection between mother and child is one that cannot be mistaken, nor can it be severed. Mothers will sacrifice anything, even custody, even their own well-being, even their very lives to preserve their child. So no matter how imperfect any mother may be, we know the depth and the power and the certainty of mother's love. There are many places where the Bible compares God's love to that of a mother. Our second reading from Isaiah depicts God as one who will nurse God's people and carry them in her arms and bounce them on her knee. Isaiah presents the maternal God saying, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. And there is nothing like the comfort.
opportunity to sneak away anytime she can. So whether it's one or two or three or more children, moms have a way of making each child feel special. The American author Washington Irving said, the tie, the tie which links mother and child is so pure and immaculate uh, that it's never to be violated. And I consider it one of the most beautiful blessings in my life that my wife and each of my daughters have such a strong bond. Like comrades at arms, or maybe I should say more like sorority sisters, they have such a powerful and unique connection. It's just beautiful to witness. Now you may remember an advertisement from a few years ago. Generally, I don't care for TV ads. I usually just get right through them. But there was a good one out a few years ago by Pandora Jewelry, uh, and it was titled "The Unique Connection." And the ad begins with six mothers lined up side by side while their kids brought in one by one wearing blindfolds. Any of you remember that one? Uh, first, a happy little girl with bouncy curls is led in to the line of mothers and she reaches up to grab the face of one woman. She nuzzles her nose and quickly shakes her head no before moving on to the next. And meanwhile, her own mother watches with tears streaming down her face. At this point, she's not alone in her weeping. And finally, the little girl arrives in front of her mom, and she runs her hair, uh, hand through her mother's curls, and she giggles and muzzles her nose as she has this very emotional response. One by one, each of the six children navigates the line of women. Without the ability of seeing, patting heads and bellies and tracing faces and interlocking fingers until inevitably they find their own mothers. And some of the kids don't even take their blindfolds off before they launch into this uh, big embrace and kiss. If you haven't seen this video, you can find it on YouTube or pass by the office and I'll pull it up for you. It's, it's worth taking it. It's quite moving to see how these children locate their moms using only their sense of touch and smell. And if you have any doubts about this unique bond between mother and child, here's proof of its existence. So today, today we celebrate that bond between mother and child. We celebrate all that moms are, all that moms do, and we give thanks to mothers everywhere. Whether they be near or far, whether they now live in our memories, they will always be in our hearts, bound to us so uniquely and so wonderfully that we praise God for God's most amazing creation,
the many blessings that our lives sustain. We are grateful, O oh Lord, for all the ways your presence has made known to us, both in great and in small ways. On this day of celebrating your love, we thank you for those who have given us life. Though we may call you Father, let us not forget how often mothers embody your set past relentless love. We praise you, O oh God, for your gift of motherly love, both gentle and stern, kind and true. For those mothers who have joined you in heaven, and whom we miss dearly this day, we give you thanks. We are guided by your spirit, and we remember that you promise us communion with loved ones who go before us. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are never fully separated from them. For mothers who work day and night to raise and care for their children, we give you thanks. We also give thanks to the grandmothers and aunts, sisters, stepmoms, adopted parents, and all who nurture children with unconditional love. For mothers who have lost a child's death and continue to suffer the pain of that loss, we ask for your mercy and your comfort for them. May we all help to sustain these mothers in their time of need and answer your call to extend compassion and care. For women who are new mothers and those who are expecting children, we pray, O oh God, for the anticipation and joy of a new life. We also pray for mothers who have failed to live up to their call to live. We believe you are a God of healing and forgiveness. We stand in solidarity this day, O oh God, with all the mothers around the world who have watched their children die of hunger. Every mother who has been a victim of abuse, every woman who stands against a world that kidnaps and massacres her children in the name of war and dares to rename them collateral damage. For these dear souls, we pray. We lift to you the spirits of all mothers around the world, and we pray for your blessing upon each one. Holy One, hear us now as we offer prayers for ourselves and for our loved ones and for all who need you this day, as we do so from the silence of our hearts.
pray for the food source. And of course, we pray for your mom. Um, we pray for the healing. And we pray for the next hope for her to live into. Um, thank you, God, for, um, for the many wonderful people who work in the medical fields and, and all the wonderful medicines that scientists create. Um, sometimes we need to go a step further and ask you for a miracle, dear God. So may we be so bold as to do that this very day. Who else are you praying for today? The mothers in Gaza and Israel. The mothers in Gaza and Israel, yes. If I may include um, those who are uh, moms struggling in all war torn parts of the country, uh, parts of the world. Um, does someone have a joy to share today? <laughs> no, we, we like to have a nice little mix, right? <laughs> Any joys? Any joys? Or, yeah, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw out my niece, Taylor, who finished her softball career at Millican University in Illinois. Uh, this week, she graduates next week, but for all graduates who make their moms extremely proud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so dear God, we, uh, we thank you for blessing the Taylor with uh, the first success and for all those who are experiencing the success of their graduations. And, and we also uh, thank you, God, today uh, for uh, Riley, Jameson, and Sophia. Um, we pray that you will bless them in their journeys, um, and, uh, deliver to them all these wonderful successes that they worked so hard to achieve, and may they always know that they have the love and support of this church. So, loving God, receive all these prayers that we bring to you in hope and faith and in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer. And together we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven.
Please join me in our prayer dedication. Gracious God, may these gifts bring glory to you and grace to your world. May our lives and our ministry reflect your love and the name of Spirit Jesus in us peace and inclusion throughout the world.
pray that God will bless you and keep you. That God's face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and fill you today and every day with an abundance of hope and love and joy.